Crates come in five metre sizes. Okay, they are varied in size. Some crates you can get large size format and some are small. Basically, the best way to lay this alpine is to take the whole crate out. And it's called, the traditional stone masonry, it's called grading. So therefore you have the whole five metres, which doesn't take up a big area. You therefore put large, medium, down to the size. We also keep aside, what's important for guys to install it, these pieces or these shale pieces or you know, whatever you like to call them, they're very good for cutting thin pieces. So you keep them aside or you find soft pieces of stone for obvious reasons that you shape it. One thing you can do, and if you look at it, it's not a matter of just placing the stone any way you can on the wall. It has to be placed in some linear pattern. Now, traditional stone masonry should always be laid as you look at the grain. It's like timber, it has a grain. If you follow the grain in line, because um, good and bad jobs can be seen by the ordinary person that you don't even know why it's good or bad, but the reason it's good and bad is because it's laid level. So one of the key things that you need to do, say for instance you lay this piece of stone or another big piece of stone. See it's, it's all level but it's not straight, it's not, it's in, in offsets. So what you would do is put that piece of stone and get a level and a, um, a pencil and run a line. So a series of lines. Now if you're laying it on brickwork, then brickwork is already an 86 mil joint. So you know you can follow that. The key is having something to look at to side at level. If it's a concrete wall, for instance, I usually go in units of 200. Now, I don't follow those units of 200 mil, but if you've got all these lines, then it's easy to establish level. And that's the key to laying alpine well. The second most important thing is to lay it tight. Now, that's where the challenge comes in. Where you can get away with it, one job recently or last year from a very good contractor, he, he cut all of the stone. Now, it looks very modular, but you might as well go buy a stack stone because that's what you've created. Yeah. Now, you don't have to do it all the time. If you look at some of the walls uh, in recently, if you get a chance to go down to Novotel uh, that we're doing a job in a restaurant, he wants a very free form. But it still works because you don't have to always, okay, there's quite a few jagged pieces of stone. Put one or two pieces as it is and then cut around it. Then, if you do that every now and then, the whole job looks like Mentally, it looks like it's cut in, but in actual fact, it's not, and you get it done quicker, obviously, then your costs are down. Basically, when we're gluing onto any wall, the surface needs to be dark. It helps you with the shadow lining. Um, for example, if we left it white, daylight shining on the wall, it sort of gives the, uh, gives the cladding away, and you want it to appear as if it's on the wall. So, and then, when gluing a, gluing a piece on, Make sure it's free from dust. So what's that mix there, Mick? And this is Carabond and Isolastic. Not too much. And the piece sits on like so. If it's a bit out of level, you just use a packer to help support it and also space it out. Um, so then basic basic principles we use when, when laying the wall is just to try and break up all the running lines. Um, so not to have too many long horizontal lines and what can really ruin the effect of the wall if you have really long vertical lines. So the most important thing is to break those up. But, so we do do a fair bit of cutting with it but you also want to um, still keep the rock face appearance. Because, you know, otherwise we're getting too close back to stack stone panels. Yeah, I mean, spatially you want to try and get a good ratio of shape. So big, small, long, linear. Um, and so by laying it all out on the ground, you sort of can see what's available. And then you stand back. We just stand back every now and then and just make sure that, you know, all the, all the shapes and ratios and sizes are, are evenly dispersed. It's now, I go between 250 and 300 dollars now. For instance, um, if there's a particular uh, style of what the person is expecting in his mind, then you may have to allow that. Um, if they want it absolutely tight, then obviously then the cost is a little higher. But generally, for me, 250 to 300 range, I don't go any more than, I don't see the need to, I can still do very well. Because you're only doing, if you want to do it very well, you can do two to four metres a day. That's hence the cost.